right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a construction using a converging lens. Now this converging lens, it has a focal length of two centimeters. We also want an object placed four centimeters in front of the lens. So you want to use the grid for this kind of thing and just try to leave yourself enough room so that you can do the whole construction. So I feel like if I make my object at this point and then four centimeters away from that, that's where the lens can be. I just want to try to draw a converging lens, which is also called a convex lens. So it's supposed to bow outward like that. So this is going to be my object. We put an arrow on its head there, just showing that it's upright. Okay, so it's called upright as opposed to inverted or upside down. Now it's four centimeters in front of the lens. Now this is the front, the left side. That's the convention that I'll use when I do these constructions. And that makes the other side the back or behind the lens. So behind the lens. All right, we want to measure off this distance which is four centimeters. This is our lens. And we want to also mark down the focal points. Now the focal points are going to be on both sides of the lens, left and right. And this is going to be the setup. So we can call that F f and negative f it's sometimes called but basically the distance of the focal length here is two centimeters okay great now our job is to send rays out from our object toward the lens I'll send a couple of important rays out one of the important rays is going to be parallel with the ground. Okay, this really helps us with constructing the, the diagram. Another ray that really helps us is to send out one that goes right through the middle of the lens. Okay, the reason why this one's important is because it's the only ray that that won't bend when it goes through the lens. It's like the angle that it hits at here in the middle cancels out with the emerging light beam. And so it's going to end up just passing straight through without being deflected. The other ray, though, that one is going to be uh, bent when it enters the lens. The way that it bends, though, is through the focal point F. Now, how did I know it would bend through the focal point F? Because, as you can see in the picture uh, here, rays which come in parallel to the ground will all bend through the focal point. So that's how I knew that. There's also a picture of it up here. So now what you want to do is you want to actually see where your two rays intersect, where they meet on the other side, right? So it looks to me like they're converging right here. So what I want to draw then is going to be the image. And you, you start on the horizontal a principal axis there. This is the, yeah, principal axis. You start there and then just draw an arrow 
to the point where they converge. And that guy is going to be called the image. All right. Now we could draw a third ray as well, which is a useful one sometimes. That goes through the near focal point here till it hits the lens. Then what's it going to do? Well, we showed that rays coming in parallel get bent through the focal point. So rays that um, go through the other focal point, they come out parallel. That's the cool thing. So it'll look like that. All right, that's our diagram there. It looks like all the rays are converging to the same place. So this is actually going to be called a real image. The reason why it's real is because the light beams really do pass through that point. We'll see cases in the future where the light beams just appear to come from a certain location. I mean, it's called a virtual image. But this is a real image. Now this image will be called also inverted. As opposed to upright because it's upside down. All right, so that's the construction. We also want to come up with equations which tell us different things about the image. One of the things we'd like to find is the height of the image, theoretically. And then we want to find what's called the magnification. And we want to find the distance. So that means we're going to have to use some formulas. Now, when it comes to the distance that the object is from the lens, we're going to use the letters D O sometimes, or S O. That's the distance of the object. Different texts will use different notations. So I just want you to be aware that it could be called these different things. Now, when we find the distance to the image, We're going to call that, of course, DI, or perhaps SI. The height of the object will be called HO, generally. And then the height of the image could be HI. You may also see H prime. We'll use the letters P for the distance of the object and Q for the distance of the image. So every book is different. You know, every problem is different sometimes. Uh, but those are the conventions. All right, so thin lens equation. is going to be 1 over S O plus 1 over S I equals 1 over F. You might also see it as 1 over D O plus 1 over D I equals 1 over F. All right, so we want to plug in and solve. So let's plug in our distance of the object, which is 4 centimeters. And then we have to plug in the focal length of 2 centimeters. So hopefully we can theoretically find where this image should be located with this formula. So this tells us that the distance, distance of the image is 4 centimeters. So what you find with the mathematics should agree 
uh, with your diagram. And it looks like in our case it does. One of the next things to find would be the magnification. And you can see above there's a formula for that. It's going to be uh, either the height of the image over the height of the object, or we could do negative distance of image over distance of object. Now I'm going to use the second formula. The reason I'm using that one is I already calculated the distance of the image and I was given the distance of the object, you know. But we didn't talk about the height of the image yet. So I'll use this version of the formula for now. So it'll be negative 4 centimeters over 4 centimeters, which is a magnification of negative 1. All right, now what is the meaning of that? Well, it means that the image is not going to be bigger or smaller than the original object. But it is going to be inverted, and the negative sign tells us that. We'll have an inverted image. We'll find the height of the image using this formula. And if we rearrange it, we would find that the height of the image is going to be the magnification times the height of the object. So see, that's how the magnification is used. It can either scale up or scale down uh, the object's height to get your new image height. Let's plug in our magnification is negative 1. The height of our uh, object is 2 centimeters. That was given here. 2 centimeters there. So the height of the image is negative 2 centimeters. The negative meaning, of course, it's inverted.